Discoveries in technology, medicine and nutrition are emerging with accelerating speed and improving our health and quality of life. Join us in a series of conversations about exploring the new pharma and biotechnology trends. This is a view on 3D bioprinting brought to you by Lonza. Today we are talking with Ricky Solorzano, the CEO of Alevi, a company creating innovative bioprinting solutions for top life science companies and academic institutions around the world, from desktop 3D bioprinters and bioinks to software. 3D bioprinting starts with individual cells in a support matrix, which are dispensed through a nozzle. The final 3D structure is formed in an additive way, layer by layer, giving access to geometries and abilities not accessible by traditional manufacturing technologies. 3D bioprinting technology aims to print functional tissues and entire organs to make custom patient implants for use in the clinic. The ultimate goal is repairing or completely replacing organs or body parts. Although we are still far from fulfilling these plans, 3D bioprinting can already produce functional tissues and organoids. With 3D printed skin, bone and blood vessels in development, this technique is here to stay and transform medicine. So hello Ricky, welcome to our podcast. Could you explain to us why printing cells out of nozzles while keeping them alive represents a challenge? I think the idea of printing cells from a printer in general has been a relatively new one in the sense of the last five years. Beforehand, they used to just print materials and then used to seed cells on top. And when they realized the cells would not really infiltrate deep enough, they started to think about how they could print cells within the materials and then create an entire structure with cells evenly spread throughout the construct. The biggest challenge to overcome has been how do we take the material and go from a liquid to a solid and still have the cells alive throughout the process. We've pretty much gotten past that point and now I think everyone is focused on how do we not only print the cells and have them stay alive, but then when they get printed, do they actually do something useful? This leads perfectly into the second question, which would be, how do you translate shape into function when it comes to designing organs or even body parts? So the whole premise of bioprinting, the foundation of bioprinting is the fact that the human body, each tissue in the body, and cells within those tissues all have a significant geometrical shape. Our cells are patterned in shapes that lead to a specific function. If you take heart cells, and you randomly throw them in a dish, they're going to start beating over seven days. But they're going to beat in different orientations, in different directions. If you're able to take those same heart cells, you combine them with collagen or with matrix gel, and you pattern them in lines, you get beating in 24 hours. And you get 50% more intense beating because by placing the cells in a more natural environment that they already know they're supposed to be in, they start performing with even better function. And this has implications across tissue spectrum, across the board. Geometry translates into function. How can you ensure proper vasculature of the tissue, of the organ? What about ensuring angiogenesis within the printed tissue or organ or an organoid? Ensuring good tissue design is where the future is in terms of the whole industry. There's a lot of people that think the bioprinting field is creating large organ tissues today. And while that is the promise it continues to hold, the reality is we're actually creating more tiny micro-based structures. So how do we evolve into larger tissues is a question we always ask. The question brings relevant implications of both angiogenesis or vascularization and innervation, which is the nerves. The answers are still evolving, but this control over cells, blood vessel design, and biology in general is the focus to find the answers. By having this control, we can begin to design tissues that get proper oxygen and nutrients transfer and then respond in a way that we design. The other aspect that's very important for larger tissues relates directly to Lanza, and those are the cells. We need tremendous amount of cells to create larger tissues. 
Nonetheless, being able to control and precisely place a tremendous amount of precious cells or certain bio inks with a great sense of precision is really what the industry is evolving into. It's about repeatability and reliability to have accurate tissues that are uniquely useful. And should they be large tissues, include thoughts of vascularization and innervation design. So animal models are not always predictive of the human body and its responses to drugs and treatments. 3D printed organs could represent a source of materials for the so-called phase zero clinical trials where the drug candidates could be tested on artificially grown, even miniature human organs. Do you expect this addition to speed up the entire drug approval process? So we do. And we're very excited about that future. The majority of the industry today is actually more focused on these micro-based structures as we've been speaking about. These microstructures can provide better data to anyone studying tissue models from basic science, disease modeling, and, and drug discovery. The value provided could be huge, and we strongly believe it's going to help reduce the time it takes to bring a drug to market. We even believe there are opportunities for these models to be personalized. And the idea of having a personalized model for personalized drug doses is very exciting. There's no doubt it's going to happen. I think the question is about how do we continue to ensure wide adoption by the community with these platforms? That's why we believe it's so important for bioprinting platforms to be accessible, to be powerful, and also given this community to have the ability to have high throughput screening. What is the future of 3D bioprinting? I think the future of 3D bioprinting is going to have its steps, its phases. In the immediate phase, it's going to be serving the drug discovery industry. In the long phase, the horizon, we're going to be seeing simple bioprinted tissues, things like bone, trachea, and skin to empower physicians to serve patients better. The last thing I wanted to touch on in this whole conversation is I know a lot of people watch our endeavors within space, and it's honestly one of our most exciting projects. As one of the leaders within the world for bioprinting, we've done a lot of work over the years to position ourselves to launch a bioprinting extruder to the International Space Station. This would empower astronauts the ability to to do more bioprinting experiments. These experiments would allow us to study better what are the effects of zero gravity on human health. It's one of the future aspects of bioprinting, but we're very excited to be contributing to it. Thank you, Ricky, for your time. This has been really exciting. Awesome, thank you for having me. Join us next time as we speak to experts in the pharmaceutical industry to get a view on the latest research and technology trends. 